I grew up in a Muslim household and Islam was always mentioned, but never truly practiced. It wasn't until I was about 17 that I began to seriously contemplate life, to think about God, ask myself questions, and just think about my place in the universe. What am I doing here? Now, this reflection made me wonder if Islam was maybe the answer. Because I would always hear about the religion, but I never fully grasped and understood what it was about. When I opened a translation of the Quran for the first time, I remember I was completely lost. Even though I was reading it in my mother tongue, the meaning, the context of the book, I, it completely missed me. I realized then that if I wanted to truly connect with Allah Azza wa Jal, and understand his message, I had to learn the Arabic language. And I was right. Once I learned it, I realized how much I was missing on. But making the decision of learning the Arabic language, it wasn't easy. It took me, it took me long months. And that idea was always in the back of my head. However, when I made that decision, I left everything I had back home, including family. And I left with no money driven by a need to just find truth. Learning Arabic from scratch was challenging, but it transformed me and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that I have been through that pain and it connected me not only to Allah, but to my very self. Today, I have built a community for those who find themselves where I once was, searching, questioning, eager for change and, and just eager for growth for becoming better, a better person, a better Muslim. And if my journey resonates with you, keep watching. Because this, inshallah, could be that moment that inspires you to finally take that crucial step. That crucial step that you have been procrastinating on, that you know you should have taken a long time ago. So let's dive deep into why we should learn the Arabic language as Muslims and how you can get started today, inshallah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi amma ba'd So welcome to this presentation about how to finally master the Arabic language. What is the actual steps you need to take towards the Arabic language? And what is the methods? And this whole big idea of learning the Arabic language, how can you break it down to make it into a realistic goal that is easy to be attained? So in this video, what I would like to, to tell you guys about and to break down is first of all, the essential role of Arabic for every Muslim. Second of all, the four stages to master Arabic. Third of all, the proven method to follow to become fluent. I will show you some real stories of students who did it. And then I will tell you where can you learn through this method that we will talk about. So first of all, let's talk about the first step, which is the essential role of Arabic for every Muslim. Basically, why is Arabic important? What is the makana? What is the, the role of the Arabic language in the life of a Muslim in Islam itself? So the way how I like to put it to you guys is that if you truly believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the most fair of all, He is Ahkam al Hakimin, wa He is the most Adil, He is the most fair. If you truly believe that, then it doesn't align with common sense and rationality that. If somebody puts effort into learning the Arabic, the Arabic language, not only being the Arabic language a simple language, but rather an act of worship for a Muslim. So learning the Arabic language to understand the Quran and the Sunnah is an act of worship. So the fact that there, there are certain individuals out there that believe that being Muslim and not knowing the Arabic language and 
just practicing the religion of Islam through translation, through their mother tongue, through English. It doesn't make sense to me that these individuals think that those who know the Arabic language have the same level of clarity, the same level of understanding, the same level of connection to Allah Azza wa Jal than those who know. When Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ A rhetorical question. Do those who know are like those who don't know? Allah Azza wa Jal says. Just like he says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah elevates the, the ranks of those who have believed amongst you and those who sought knowledge, those who sought Islamic knowledge, the knowledge that gives you more insight about understanding what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from you, understanding what the Prophet Sallallahu taught us. So the role of the Arabic language in Islam being the liturgical language of Islam, being the, the language which you can understand the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not only a language, but rather is a worship. By you learning it, you're worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. And if we were to just give it a simple reason why the Arabic language is important is enough that Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned it in the Quran. Anything that's mentioned in the Quran is already a praise. The creator of this whole universe, out of all the things he could have mentioned, out of all the words he could have chosen, Rather, out of all the languages he could have chosen to speak to us through it, he chose the Arabic language. So, it wouldn't make sense that somebody out there doesn't see this value, the value of this language. And I believe that anybody who truly who truly cares about Allah Azza wa Jal as being his creator should do his utmost effort to try to understand him through his own language or through the language that he has chosen to talk to us with. Just put it like this. Imagine there is a mother that has a child and this child is born deaf. This mother doesn't know sign language, but the child doesn't have any other option than learn sign language. Now imagine what anybody would say about this mother if she says, me personally, I'm too busy to learn sign language to understand my son or to communicate with him. I'd rather just have a third person translate in between us. Or I don't really want to, to learn it because I think that I already get, it already gets the job done having somebody to translate there. Or saying, for example, I actually don't even need it. I just pay the translator and, and you know, I get that translation. What anybody with just common sense would think about this mother? They would say, you really don't care about your son. You can't. You can't even take time, just maybe like 30 minutes a day, one hour a week. It just takes maybe two classes every other day to, in, 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 in a space of, of a year for you to learn it. Where is your heart, oh mother of this child? So now if you put the same analogy into Islam, and into the fact that somebody doesn't want to learn or is too lazy or is, keeps procrastinating to understand directly Allah Azza wa Jal and is fine accepting mediocrity, accepting a, trans, a mediocrity type of translation that is 
is exposed to the person that translated it and interprets mistakes. Because at the end of the day, is a human being who makes mistakes that translated that book. So of course, there's going to be there is going to be deficiencies in that translation, in that interpretation. So if we were to put the example of that mother into that person that doesn't want to put that effort into learning the Arabic language, we would say, you truly don't care about Allah. You truly don't, you truly don't really want to put effort into understanding Allah Azza wa Jal, into building that relationship, into building that direct connection without a third party. So I think that the role of the Arabic language is understood by any Muslim, even if it's deep down in him, he knows that the Arabic language is important and he should learn it. And if he learns it, his knowledge will increase. And if his knowledge increases, his connection with Allah Azza wa will be stronger. Let's move on into the next topic of what we want to talk about, which is the four stages to master Arabic. So now that we know that mastering Arabic, that learning the Arabic language as a Muslim is important and is beneficial and is something that every Muslim should do in his, in his life. Now, how do you do it? What is the actual simplified explanation on how you learn the Arabic language. So here's the most simplified explanation that I can give you. When you want to learn the Arabic language, you have to learn the Arabic language like a baby would. Now, if you look at a baby, how he learns a language, first, he starts talking about self, which is the smallest circle. You start talking about yourself. You start introducing yourself, my name is, I this, I am from, I feel, I am big, I am small, I am. In this particular stage, you learn all the different ways on how to express yourself, or at least the most common ones, which are where you are from, how you feeling, how you feeling today, how tall you are, how short you are what country you come from, et cetera, et cetera. Then the second stage is you start learning about the surroundings. So the surroundings would be, in this case, your family, right? It would be your house. It would be your room. It would be the things you do on a daily basis, your, your routine, your friend, and you... Once you are in this stage, you learn all the vocabulary and all the most common sentences that somebody would say when you are at this stage. Like, for example, this is my sister, and this is my father, and so on. Now, the third stage is topics. You want to start learning at this stage about topics, like your hobbies. Like, oh yeah, um, I like to eat in the morning because I believe that it makes me more productive throughout the day. At this stage, you are, you are more fluent. Now you have mastered introducing yourself. You have mastered talking about your feelings and how you're feeling and your pains and your body pain, hurts and, and yourself. Then you went into the surroundings. Now you're talking about topics. You can even make a presentation. اليوم سأتكلم إليكم في أمر التعلم اللغة العربية وأهميتها. So you start talking about about topics, about general interest topics, and then the last stage, which is the stage where you are the most fluent, is when you are able to talk about abstract ideas, when you are able to talk about philosophical ideas and, and not even philosophical, but just abstract ideas. Like, for example, why I believe that a Muslim should learn the Arabic language. This is an abstract idea. And I am talking about analogies and examples on why it wouldn't make sense for somebody to not learn 
the Arabic language. This is the ultimate and last stage of learning a language. So a lot of people, they have this misconception that, that learning the Arabic language is a hard language. But there is a difference in between being a rich language and being a hard language to learn. And the Arabic language is not a hard language, language to learn, rather it's a rich language. It has over 12 million vocabulary words, and it doesn't mean that you have to learn 12 million vocabulary words to be fluent at it. But rather, in order for you to be fluent at a language, as expert, experts in, linguistic, in the linguistic fields have uh, stated, you only need in between 3,000 to 5,000 to be fluent at a conversation, conversational type of level. And if you want to go to an academical level of fluency, you would only need 10,000 vocabulary words. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to, you don't have to go and memorize the 12 million vocabulary words, but rather you just need 1% and even less of, of those 12 million vocabulary words. So, so when it comes to, to the four stages of, of learning the Arabic language, this is how simple it is. And what you do then is just learn just learn if, if, if you're going to say, for example, OK, I need about 3000 vocabulary words, then divide these 3000 into four and you will see that it's not even that much. You, ju you just have to learn the most common sentences in, in the self stage. Like my name is. I am OK. I am happy. I am angry. I feel tired. I want to sleep. I want to drink. I want to sit down. I want to go. You learn all of that, which wouldn't take you that much either. Then you start talking about the surroundings. And this is my sister, this is my brother, this is my house, I live this place, my, my jinsia, my nationality is this, but I live in this place, I live on the third floor, I, and like that. And then the topics, my hobbies, I like to do tarwih an nafs. I like to go for, you know, to chill in the outside of the city. And you start talking about different topics like that. So, so each stage, you put some time into that stage until you master that stage and until you master all the vocabulary that you need to, to move on to the next stage. And you do this over and over until you master each stage. It's that simple. Now moving on into the next step, which is the proven method to follow to become fluent at the Arabic language. What is the proven method? Okay, we know that we have four stages and we know that I need to learn about how to introduce myself and how to talk about myself, etc., etc. But how do I go about doing that? How do I even start? Where do I start, right? So I would like to shamelessly plug our new curriculum here, Kashf al-Mufradat. Kashf al-Mufradat, just the title of it, it ha is, ha is directly related to this proven method to follow, which is revealing or unveiling as if, as, as if it has a veil. So I unveil it. I remove the hijab of the Mufradat, of the vocabulary. And this is prepared by me, helped and backed and revise with, uh, with my team. Yes, and within my team, we have, uh, we have master's holders in the Arabic language. My teacher, my own teacher, who's writing his own PhD right now. Uh, so so we, have, um, we have a whole team behind each little detail of, um, of, uh, of this new curriculum. And we are planning on, on uh, truly getting this curriculum to the level and hopefully hopefully being mentioned when it comes to to the Medina books and Arabia bin Adik books. We want Kashf al Mufradat as well to be mentioned and we want it to be taught in universities in Saudi Arabia and we are on a mission to to amass a thousand success stories from our students to show and use as proof that this curriculum works. 
And so this is the, the method that, that, uh, that is proven. And as I will show you later, students have you know, learned through this method. And I personally have learned through this method, method as well. So the proven method is basically to, to start with conversational type of texts and go, and go into more difficult texts. So, so just to give you an example, and I will actually allow you to see inside of the curriculum. I know there's been a few people asking me uh, on my Instagram to show the inside. And, um, and here, for example, we have the first lesson. So you see how I was telling you, in the beginning, you have to learn anything that's related to self, to yourself. So the method on how you learn the Arabic language and the proven method is by starting with conversational texts in Arabic and breaking down each and every single word of that text and not going into the next text until you know each and every single word and sentence of that text. So, for example, here we have an example. This lesson starts by saying, Muhammad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We all know, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then Ali says, wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Kayfa haluka ya akhi? So this, as an instance, right? Kayfa haluka ya akhi? When you first start, the, when you first start learning the Arabic language, obviously you don't know what kayfa haluka ya akhi means. So what we do, and the correct method on what to do is, for example, here we have the breakdown of the expressions of this particular lesson. So, as you can see on the top, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you learn that it means peace be upon you and Allah's mercy. If you go to the third cell, it says, Kayfa haluka, which means, how are you asking a male? Kayfa haluki, on the next cell, is asking, how are you for the female? And what you do, and what our students do at our institute, is after each text, you want to go to each word, and then each expression and crucial sentences to memorize in that particular lesson, and just memorize it. And literally don't go to the next text until you are able to read back this text and understand each sentence is what is what what it means. So Alhamdulillah Ana Aidan Bikhair Marhaban Bika fi Masjidina. So because I have memorized each of these cells and I know Kaifa Haluka what it means, I know Ya Akhi what it means, I know Alhamdulillah Bikhair what it means, I know Marhaban Bik what it means, then it's not rocket science. You're gonna go back to the text and you're gonna read it and you're gonna understand it as if you were reading it in English. So this is how you go about. And then what we do is we give small, as we call them, essential lessons. So this is an essential lesson, الضمائر المفصلة, which are the which, yeah, which are the pruna, the pronouns. So then you learn different essential lessons, like what are the pronouns? أنا, I, me, نحن, us. You, anta, antuma, you too. And you keep on moving. And here I want to show you something that, uh, so before we move on, actually, I want to show you, of course, you then would, would need exercises, right? So, so to put in practice what you have been learning. So apart from putting it in practice when speaking, and you should have a speaking partner. Alhamdulillah, at Andrews Institute, the students, they have speaking sessions where they jump on and they put in practice all of this. But if you are doing this on your own, you should get yourself a speaking partner. Maybe perhaps a student that's on your same level and is willing to, to learn and uh, practice on a daily basis. And that way you can progress with him. Now, here I want to actually show you that was the first lesson. But let me show you a more advanced lesson. 
So here, for example, in this lesson, as you can see, everything that is black, and this is the, the lesson 17. The one you, you seen previously was lesson one. This is lesson 17. Everything that's black here, the student already knows it. The student knows what this is already because of previous lessons. So that's the goal. The goal is to compound vocabulary to the point where when you jump into the next lesson, you already learn a lot of vocabulary from the previous lesson. So now you don't have to go over that vocabulary that you have already learned, but rather learn new vocabulary. And you keep on moving lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson to the point where you see yourself reading a whole lesson and all you don't know is perhaps one, one word, two words, three words, five words. And it's just a game of numbers. But one thing that is very important is to learn through conversational and, and dialogues in the beginning. In the beginning, it's important to learn through dialogues because that's the natural way on how, you, how a baby learns how to speak in the beginning. So first, it's through dialogues, through him and his mom or the dad and, and him hearing his brothers, his siblings talking and, and the parents talking and him grabbing new vocabulary that for the next conversation, he would already know what it means, just like you do when reading. And then, of course, it's very important to put all of those in practice. So, so here in our, in our institute, as an instance, the students, they get the translation of that particular text in the beginning, so they know, so they can kind of like link what, um, what was meant by certain things on the text. They get obviously the breakdown on, of all the vocabulary words of all the verbs as well. They get the vocabulary in context. So that vocabulary used in context. So for example, bid what, what does bid atun mean? So as the Arabic proverb goes is bil mithali maqal. With an example, the, the saying or the expression becomes clear. So Based on that principle, we give the student examples on, on, that word, on those vocabulary words that, that he has been learning. Otherwise, it's just scattered vocabulary words. And then when it comes to the essential lessons, you keep on growing the level of, of complexity of those essential lessons. So the student can grammatically or to be grammatically correct when speaking, basically, and to make the structures of his, of his sentences grammatically correct. So, so this, is, uh, this is the method on how to do so. Apart from this, of course, there are certain exercises that the student gets here. Like, for example, this is based on an audio that's provided to the student. Let me show you. So as you can see here, the student, based on that lesson, he then gets exercises on, on an audio related to the vocabulary and the things and the lessons he has learned on that, on that, um, on that particular lesson. For example, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya habibati. al qabaltu jarana al jadida ahmada. Haqqan? كيف كان اللقاء ومن أين هم؟ لم أسأل من أين هم ولكن قال لي إنهم جاءوا إلى حينا قبل أسبوع أو شيء مثل هذا كان جدا طيبا ودعوته هو وأهله لزيارتنا. So this is to show you that there are certain things that you have and you will need after learning this vocabulary, which is exercises on reading comprehension, which will test the memory. The memorization of your new words or your comprehension so your auditory auditory skills and your listening skills can become as good as your reading and understanding skills then as well there are other exercises that you should work on 
which are, for example, um, so yeah, understanding skills as this one that we have right here, where you have to go back to the text and basically read. You have to read the text and say if these statements are correctly, which obviously tests the memorization of your, of your new vocabulary. And then as well, you should do some vocabulary recall as we do here. Like for example, stating what do you see in a particular image, having obviously things that of, yeah, words that you have already learned. And then as you can see at the bottom, sentence forming. Sentence forming is literally almost the only exercise I have. I used to do, just do lots of it when I was learning the Arabic language. And our teacher will go over it and he would correct our expression. So for example, if I say, Kayfal Haluka, he would say, no, you don't say Kayfal Haluka, you say Kayfa Haluka, Kayfa Haluka. And then based on that correction, then you know for next time not to make that mistake. So you keep on correcting your, your mistakes and your deficiencies in your speech, in expression, until you become better and better and better at it to the point where you are speaking perfectly, basically. So this is the, the method on how, to, on how to learn the Arabic language, which is to summarize again by basically reading dialogues and reading simple texts and breaking down the vocabulary of those texts and then putting it into practice so somebody who knows can correct you and you can become better and better at it. Now let's talk about real stories of students who actually did it, who actually follow this method and actually learn the Arabic language. So here, for example, we have uh, brother Omar, who is a student who is uh, nearly done with, uh, with the Andrews Institute program. So let's hear what he has to say. Um, I really wanted to learn Arabic because I, I wanted to understand the Quran. I wanted to understand the Hadith. I wanted to be able to read Arabic in the language of the Quran, the language of Islam, you know, the language of Jannah. And I wanted to um, be able to understand the the bayanat of the of the uh, of the uh, scholars. And now I want you to see how fluent he got after having finished through this particular method that we has we have spoken about today. Uh, inshallah, وأنا حتى أنا لا أفكر عن كلامي لما أتكلم بس كل شيء ما شاء الله الحمد لله طبيعي ولما لما أقرأ القرآن أستطيع أن أفهم معظم الأشياء. Now let's look at Saim who's another student. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Saim Ali and I'm a student at Andalus Institute. So before joining the program. I had basically no knowledge of the Arabic language. Um, all I knew was just basic things, um, like saying, how are you, and knowing how to reply back to that. And now I want to show you where he is at after using this method that we have spoken about. So I'm Ali, and I'm in London. Alhamdulillah. I can speak Arabic in the language. قبل قليل ذهبت إلى السعودية للعمرة وتكلمت مع كثير من الناس هناك بالعربية الناس هناك يتكلمون يعني باللحجة مختلفة عن الفصحى ورغم ذلك يستطيعون أن يفهموا كلامي Now let me show you this other stu student brother Ammar who was well started with no knowledge of the Arabic language 
and I've been a student of uh, Andalus Institute for the past three years. My journey before I started learning Arabic is I was I was able to memorize some parts of the Quran but the biggest factor was that I wasn't able to understand it and having that uh, inner drive within me to learn it but not finding out the best place to learn it was a big big issue for me. And now I want to show you his level after having gone through this method. <laughs> التحقت إلى هذه البرنامج قبل ثلاث سنوات والحمد لله ثم الحمد لله وصلت إلى مستوى جيد في رحلة ودراسة اللغة العربية الآن أفهم القرآن. And yes, sisters as well. We always have a trouble getting the testimonies from the sisters because they're a little bit more shy. But here we have a sister as well that I want to show you her level before and after. Um, when I started, I only knew the alphabet in Arabic. I only knew the alphabet so I could read and write Arabic, like write and well, having an example in front of me to write it, not from my uh, head. And now here is her level after having gone through this method. <laughs> بدأت بجدية في تعلم اللغة العربية قبل حوالي سنتين أو سنتين ونص أشكر الله وبعد ذلك أشكر المركز الأندلسي كثيرا يمكنني أن أتحدث اللغة العربية آخرا الحمد لله So as you can see all of these students there is nothing special that they have that you don't have or you know the the method was the same the method is to start with easy text to extract the vocabulary to to learn it to use it to be corrected on the mistakes that you make using it and to adjust based on the feedback that you get and keep on building by getting rid of the mistakes and and you know speaking more correctly and all right, lastly, very briefly, I want to show you where can you learn. And so here, everything that I have spoken to you about and explained to you, we use exactly the same method with this uh, curriculum that I have previously showed to you, which obviously applies the same methods and the same methodologies that we have spoken about today. So. Like I was telling you in the beginning, in the intro, I have built a community based on the problems I was having myself when learning the Arabic language and how I keep telling my team members and my students, I always tell them I wish, I wish Andrews Institute was already something when I wanted to learn Arabic so I could have joined. So literally everything is being built based on that young me, that individual that was eager to learn, that was eager to, to grow. So as you can see here, once you land on the, on the, you know, the first page of, the, of being part of the community is going to be the community. Here you have a few things like upcoming events. As you can see, we have speaking sessions pretty much every day except for, for Friday. Um, here you have the timeline where different students talk about different things. Here you have the refund reserve. Refund reserve means it's basically uh, this, this, <laughs> this is our uniqueness, right? So when you join the program, you pay $99 a month and you will start seeing your payments piled up on your refund reserve. Once you complete the program, you have the option to get all your money back, to get all your refund reserve back in exchange of us being able to share your story and making a, um, you know, showing it to, to the public, your before and after. Now, the most important part is obviously the classroom. So once you go into the classroom, the main modules are these, these ones up here. Of course, you have other progressive courses like Earn What You Learn, where I teach students how to, how to earn money and different other 
upcoming courses that we have at the moment, at the moment of recording this, probably when you watch it, might already have been released. But um, the main modules are this one. So first, you have the Guide to Discipline, which is basically the introduction, and I teach students on how to get disciplined because, you know, when it comes to discipline, it's the only skill required to master any other skill. So if you want to master the Arabic language, you first need to be disciplined. So there is plus four plus hours of, of teachings here about how to get disciplined. Let me quickly walk you inside so you can see the topics. Limiting beliefs and how to fix them, 12 common reasons for students' failure, motivation against dis discipline, etc. Then you have the reading module. So if you don't know how to read and write, I will teach you here how to read and write from uh, from very beginning from very beginning level to uh, to yeah being able to read and write basically. Then once you once you have that skill of learn learn how to read how, learn how to read and write, you are going to go to the main module, which is the Kashf al Mufradat, as I showed you guys. This right here is Kashf al Mufradat, and I showed you previously the the lessons how they look inside but what's interesting here to see is that each lesson for example if you look at lesson 17 here each lesson has a vocabulary lesson first of all so the vocabulary lesson is where i explain the the lesson and this is in arabic after lesson 10 is all in arabic the vocabulary lesson then we have the vocabulary breakdown which is where i break down each vocabulary word how to use it how to put it in context and um, and yeah, basically how to how to use those scattered words into actual sentences. Then you have something we call the vocabulary revision revision resources. Vocabulary of lesson seventeen. Bidaun, bidaun, bidaun. View of something. Vocabulary of lesson seven. So this basically for certain students, they like to listen to it while they're walking to memorize those, you know, to remember and revise those vocabulary words even better. Uh, you have essential lessons as well. Sometimes there's one per lesson. Sometimes there's three like this one. And here I explain an essential lesson. In this case, it's taqsimul ism, the noun division. And the essential lessons are gradually from the pronouns from the very first lesson all the way to later on having covered all the topics of al-ajurumiya, having covered all the most important topics of grammar in Arabic. Now what's very, uh, what's very beneficial is the, um, is the different exercises that we provide. Like for example, the audio transcription. Here the student is supposed to transcribe. He has an audio down here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya habibati. So this audio right here is to, to be transcribed. Now, when it comes to learning the Arabic language or any other language, you have different language skills that you need to, to learn, right? So obviously reading, writing, speaking, understanding while reading, your understanding while listening. So we make sure that you get exercises on all of these different skills so you can develop all of these skills. So for example, this one is the audio assessment, which is the same thing, but, but listening to the audio and extracting pieces of information from the audio. Did he say this or did he say that? And that way the student develops his listening skills. Now it's very beneficial here, which I will actually show you uh, an actual account from, from a student. So here, as you can see, I am inside of the account of one of our students, uh, Karim. And if I come on lesson seven, you can see right here that he has submitted an assessment, the assessment for this particular lesson. As you can see here, assessment submitted. So for each lesson, you will have to submit, the student needs to submit a, a, uh, a assessment right, in, for, in a form of a picture, responding to certain questions. And then what's truly beneficial, and we wanted to really set the standard here and, 
and change the industry of learning Arabic online is that you get personalized feedback from instructors reading and checking your assessments, as you can see here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Karim. Ahsanta, sahih. It's usually good, but sometimes it's not that good. So as you can see, um, the instructor goes over over the assessment of the student. Sometimes that assessment is a written assessment. Sometimes is a is a you know a video or audio assessment that you have to send, and you are corrected on your speech. You are corrected on your um, you know pronunciation on your sentence forming. Sometimes it's sentences that you write down. Sometimes it's based on the audio assessments, as I showed you. And so, and so um, in Anders Institute, we make sure that you develop all the different skills that are required for you to, to become fluent in Arabic. Then apart from this, we have the calendar, which is where you can see all the speaking sessions, all the upcoming speaking sessions. As you can see on Friday, we don't have many, but uh, the rest of the days are fully packed with speaking sessions every day that you can that you can join any of, of them. Uh, at one point when it goes live, there is a notification that pops up next to the community with a with a live uh, you know live button that you can just click on there and join directly the session for easy access. And then what truly makes everything different uh, to be part of Anders Institute is the leaderboard. So on the leaderboard, not only you acquire badges as you, as you uh, accomplish different milestones in the program, like for example, Finding My Way, Alphabet Rookie, Vocab Rookie, then you get into Caveman Communicator. And for each milestone in the program, you achieve a, a badge that comes with points as well. And then as you can see here on the, um, on the leaderboard, the students compete to be the top students in the platform. So, mashallah, tabarakallah, Quadri and Jannal Maisha and everybody that's that's staying on the first page, mashallah, they are they are uh, they have a friendly competition going on where every time that I check, there's somebody on the on the top, and um, and that truly makes students. Um, stay consistent apart from the refund reserve, knowing that you can get your money back if you complete. Um, you know, we have uh, what we call stories as well, which if you go on your space, let me check. As you can see here, at certain parts of the program, you have to upload your story. And, and this, in this case, Abdul Karim, he, he was only on lesson seven. So, so obviously he doesn't have too many too many stories but the idea is that as you progress through the program you record your story answering a question answering certain questions speaking in arabic so later on in your space you can see all your stories of how much you have progressed in in your in your arabic journey now my idea with uh, creating Andrews institute like i said it was to create a community of individuals, those individuals that I was looking for when I was in Spain by myself, not surrounded by any practicing Muslim. And, and, uh, and the vision is to give you all the necessary skills that I wish I had then. So at the time of recording this, the Earn While You Learn, if you join us right now, you will have access to this. Now, Earn While You Learn is a program that teaches you how to how to earn money through the art of affiliate marketing, through the art of, of uh, promoting uh, under this institute. And so, like I said, at the time of recording, this is, is going to be for free with your subscription. At one point, this program will probably be sold, sold at in between 1,000 to 1,500 once we have a few students that are you know, making that amount of money on a monthly basis reoccurrently. So we can then have the ethical right to tell you, look, there's students doing it. So it only makes sense that you that you pay for it. So so with this being said, um, 
this program is now for free with your subscription. The subscription is only $99 a month. And with this subscription comes the refund reserve, meaning that if you complete the program, you have the option to get all your money back um, as long as you have completed the program within three years. And as long as you accept us sharing your story and your progress, your before and after with, uh, with the world, basically. So I would um, you know, suggest that if you want to learn Arabic and if you are serious about learning the Arabic language, I truly believe and I haven't seen any other program that has put as much effort into their online Arabic institute as ours and that has the same amount of results from students as, uh, as ours. So for that reason, I truly believe that it is the best program to learn Arabic out there. And I, say, I try to say this with the most humbleness possible. And on top of that, um, we, are, we are coming out with uh, the new curriculum that, um, that, uh, that is being put together for, for students like yourself, from, for students who, who their first language is not their Arabic language and, and want to learn the Arabic language to the level of fluency. So with this being said, guys, uh, check the link in the description if you want to join us at Anders Institute to start learning the Arabic language, start acquiring skills that will make you a better student of knowledge. Go ahead and join us, inshallah. I will, I will be responding to all the questions in the comments down below. So make sure you leave your questions in there if you have any. Wassalamu alaikum wa